You guys have no idea how much I don't want to do this. This is a second gen cyclone. If Chevy actually made one. Um, this is my version of what the Cyclone actually could have been if GM decided to build it in 1998 in the Chevrolet platform instead of the GMZ, and if they actually wanted to use a V8 rather than a V6. Now, there's a lot of ifs, but short version is I'm building something that I always have wanted to try, and I thought it'd be really cool if it would exist, and we're making it exist right now. Last time you guys saw this project, we got started by yanking out the V6 powertrain and we got the V8 installed underneath the hood. Now, if all goes according to plan, the V8 should not have to come back out. This is a 5.3, it's from a Silverado. We put a cam and a bunch of other little upgrades in there. Um, but to get it to fit, we had to do a little bit of work. One, we built our own custom motor mounts and two, we had to build our own oil pan or actually fabricate slash modify an existing one. But now the engine is where it belongs, but that's about it. The transmission and NV149 full-time all-wheel drive transfer case are installed sort of, but they're basically just mocked up. Uh, and they actually ha both have to come out today because we have a few things left to do. One, we have a different torque converter to install. Two, we got to get the flex plate in because can't go very far without that. Uh, three, we have a couple of easy upgrades that we're gonna do to the transmission while it's out. And then finally, uh, one of the more important ones, I have to modify the transmission cross member just because it barely rubs on the transmission pan. So that's actually what we're gonna get started on. And once we take care of those items, we'll get the transmission and transfer case back under the truck. And then if we still have time, we'll continue on some of the other plumbing stuff, like maybe we'll get the exhaust manifolds installed, maybe the intake manifold and some wiring will go in. Uh, we'll measure for drive shafts and stuff like that. So let's jump right in and do some welding. All right, so this right here is what we're gonna address first. Uh, I have no idea why it hits because this is a the factory S10 pan, factory cross member, uh, pretty much everything factory, but it just like barely kisses the cross member. So we're gonna pull it out, do a little bit of a notch, weld it back in, and then have plenty of room. That area right there, that's what we get to fix. Should be easy. All right, we have our cut marked out. We're just gonna take about three eighths of an inch off. I'm just gonna replace this section here with just a straight piece that angles back. There's plenty of room, so let's cut. Kind of a rough cut now these welds here i'm going to just cut out so i take this little layer off just the outside yep just the outside layer hey just like that we'll get it cleaned up a little bit i'm just going to make a patch So we got the cross member all taken care of. I've got it mocked up underneath the truck. And as you can see, we now have plenty of clearance between the transmission pan and cross member, which is awesome. Um, I even sprayed some of that 3M cavity wax on the inside just to prevent it from corroding or anything like that. Um, drive shafts, I'm kind of mocking this stuff up here. The original S10 rear drive shaft, I think is actually gonna work just fine. I've got it kind of mocked up here roughly uh, where it's gonna be at ride height. Um, this is where it's gonna be drooped out. Um, and up here, 
where it slips into the back of the NV149, we've got probably, I'd say a good five eighths of an inch right there uh, between the seal, um, probably an inch and a quarter if we include all the way up there. Anyway, um, short version is I think the rear drive line will work. The front drive shaft, we're definitely going to have to get custom with. Uh, this is a Cadillac Escalade front drive line that I cut down. Just, you can see I cut the tube just to kind of fit it up in there. Uh, two and three quarter inch diameter. It's going to hit on the shift arm and um, barely, barely hit the cross member here. The S10 originally had this two inch diameter drive line, which I'm gonna have to find a way to get one built in two inch. Um, so we need this end here, get another drive shaft by the way, this end here for the transfer case, that end for the front diff with that kind of a two inch tube or maybe something even a little bit smaller depending on what we can find for a good strong drive shaft. So I'm gonna get that stuff uh, dropped off at the local drive shaft place and then we'll continue on. We'll get the transfer case pulled out after I measure and then the transmission will come out and then we'll get the converter, the servo and dipstick and a few other odds and ends installed into the transmission. made of magnesium, believe it or not. Found it right where I left it. It's gonna be a tight fit, James. All right, so now we got to put a flex plate in. We have an upgraded torque converter and the servo down here on the transmission. We're going to put a better one of those in. So let's get to it. You guys have commented a few times, and I figured it's worth explaining, um, why I'm putting a 4L60 in this truck. Uh, the answer is easy. It's, oh, there you guys are. Uh, it's because I have it. Um, long term, I probably will, if I get it to fit, put a 4L80 in here because it's stronger. But um, I had a 4L60 in the couple truck for a while, held up remarkably. I know they don't have like the best reputation in the world. But again, it's not a, not a long-term long -term thing. It's just kind of phase one. And then we can't forget about my absolute all-time favorite, most important step. We just got to put a happy little dot right there to remind no one that we torqued them properly. But doesn't that make you happy? Makes me happy. Okay, so the flex plate's installed. Nothing special there. That's just the original flex plate that came with the 5.3. And um, we got that firewall seam just kind of folded over. And all that's really gonna do is just give us a little bit more clearance for running wiring and hoses and stuff down through here. Uh, mainly I'm concerned about that just because with the wiring harness that we have, the branch for the transmission, um, the rear O2s and the speed sensor all kind of have to run down through this area. So just wanted to have a little bit of extra room and no sharp edges. Um, oh, the next upgrades that we are going to do, we've got a torque converter and that guy right there. Um, the engine that we have in here is a 5.3, has a Summit Pro LS um, stage four truck cam, which has 222 degrees duration intake to 32 degrees exhaust, I think around 550 lift. So it's a fairly spicy cam for a 5.3. Um, and to help the truck accelerate just a little bit better, we're gonna install a higher stall speed torque converter. Now, Believe it or not, this is actually the same exact model of converter that I ran in the Copo truck when it still had the 4L60 in it. And I love the converter, so I figured I gotta get another one. Um, this is a Summit Pro LS uh, 3000 to 3200 RPM stall speed converter. Um, if you're curious, that is the 
part number right there. And then, like I said, I, I ran this in the Copo truck um, and I really loved how it performed. That truck got off the line really, really well. In fact, I think it felt like it 60 footed better with the 4L60 in this converter than it ever did with the 4L80. So anyway, happy to get that converter installed. I think it'll be great in the S10. Um, this guy right here, this is a Corvette servo for the side of the transmission. It's just gonna help give it a little bit firmer gear shifts. Uh, we picked up just an OEM seal, or a, a, not OEM, a replacement seal for the converter. And then, oh, this guy here we picked up from Summit. This is a uh, ICT billet dipstick bracket that'll allow us to bolt the original 4L60 dipstick tube from the S10 onto this transmission. And the reason that's important, uh, or we need the bracket rather, is because this hole is not tapped into the block on an LS. So that little aluminum bracket just bolts up to the back of the head and gives us a spot to install the dipstick. And I wanted to run the S10 dipstick just because it fits the firewall um, and it'll pop out I think it comes out like just right here. So that'll give us plenty of room around the truck intake and the eventuality of a supercharger. So uh, let's get that converter installed. A lot of times this little o-ring here gets caught in the snap ring groove so what they say is you just kind of cut her off with it in the car that doesn't sound like very much fun i just chuck those in here Ooh, how long, Chris, how long do you think this transmission is going to last? It could be a million miles, it could be free. A million, we'll take a million. <laughs> Well, definitely not easy to get the transmission in and out. I've already got all the bolts in. The one that's at like, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock. That one's, there's hardly any clearance to get a wrench up in there. I've got it in, but I am not looking forward to getting it back out if ever or whenever this transmission needs to come out. All right, guys, I had an opportunity I just had to take real quick because um, this is like the inspiration or the long-term goal for the S10. We get a supercharger under the hood. Uh, this is the LSA from Matt's 408 Stroker. Um, this video has probably been live for a little while now, but um, go check it out if you're interested in a cool uh, motor build. But yeah, long-term, something like this, maybe an aluminum block, uh, maybe a stroker, but definitely something with a positive displacement supercharger is really really what i want to have in this s10 in the long run um i just kind of had to throw it on there just to take a quick peek and see what potential future fitment issues i might run into one of them down there uh the heater core hoses they basically touch the back of the blower uh, but other than that it kind of looks like it was meant to be i mean the LSA blower has this little notch back here, which clears the wiper motor just about perfectly. So anyway, I'm just gonna drool over this for a little while and, uh, and get back to work. But yeah, goals. All right, drive shaft shop got us a drive shaft. So let's see if it fits.
probably that cross member's gonna be in the way. There's the shifter. This is a good start. So this spot right here where the cross member goes around the drive shaft is the tightest spot. And um, I was like 50-50 whether or not the two inch tube would clear. Um, I actually did order a clocking ring for the transfer case to roll it uphill, but they're like back ordered. I didn't really want to run one if I didn't have to. So we'll see how this goes. Ah, we should have a mile of room, I think. Yeah, well, that mile disappeared into about a quarter mile, but I think we'll be okay. Alright, so I'm kind of skipping around in time just a little bit here because um, I want to get some fuel system components mounted and the transfer case might be in the way. So before I like permanently install that, I want to make sure I have room for this. So my plan, if it'll work out, I'm going to take the stock steel hard lines, 3 8 and 5 16 kind of bend them down, bend them forward, and run them into this summit filter regulator that I've got here. Um, I'm gonna run an inverted flare on this side and probably run a short section of 6AN to go into the filter here. Um, so my plan is, like I said, put some bends and stuff in here, and then I'll have a flex fuel sensor that I wanna mount up here where the original uh, fuel filter went. So just wanna make sure I have room for that before the transfer case is permanently installed. I think we've made a siphoning effect now. All right, guys, it is new parts delivery day. I just got a whole bunch of stuff in from Summit. Um, and this is the intake that I have been really excited about for quite a while now. This is a, a Trailblazer SS intake. It's probably one of the best cathedral port intakes for um, an LS, especially one that we want to make all around power. Good low RPM torque, good high RPM horsepower. Uh, this is the intake manifold is kind of like one of the best OEM style intakes out there. Um, so, like I said, I grabbed all this stuff from Summit. I was able to get the intake, the fuel rail. Um, this is a high flow flex fuel sensor uh, mounting block, which we'll show you that in a little bit. I already showed you the uh, filter regulator assembly there. I also picked up from Summit some of these 50 pound an hour uh, flex fuel, I think they're like a flex fuel L92 injector, about 50 pound an hour rate. So, plenty of fuel flow for our uh, phase one. But um, guys, I am now faced with a dilemma about what to do with this intake. Um, if you saw the little blurb I did probably earlier in this video with the LSA supercharger just kind of temporarily slid under the hood, you will remember that the LSA supercharger just would interfere with the two heater core lines or tubes, which I thought, okay, not a big deal. We can address that problem way down the road because surely this intake manifold is going to fit no problem. So if we come over here and attempt to get our intake on the block, you may notice rather quickly, oh, come on, that the heater core tube actually touches the back of the intake and that's right there slid pretty much all the way back. And the front bolt holes are about an inch away from lining up. So that's the dilemma right there is what do I do about the heater core tube. Now I hopped online and a lot of other guys have experienced this with the Trailblazer SS intake on a four wheel drive, especially four wheel drive S10. And most of them are like, oh, just bend the tube out of the way. Which uh, I'm not saying that's impossible, but with where I put the motor, basically all the way back, nearly touching the firewall, there's no way that I'm gonna be able to bend those tubes without basically folding them and kinking them to have enough clearance to get a heater hose on there. So. 
as much as I hate to say this, I'm, I'm really like, I'm torn right now because on one hand, I could get a car intake manifold like a LS1 or an LS6. Um, I don't actually think those would work with the four bolt throttle body that I have already purchased. Um, they would be a lower profile one and oh shoot, I don't know. Like, but anyway, right now I'm thinking, I'm just gonna chop the end of that tube off which like I said, I hate to say this, especially since this is gonna be an all wheel drive truck. We have winter time coming up and it would be really cool or really hot to have heat inside this truck this winter. And not that it's like my daily drive or anything, but I was just kind of bummed. So I, I guess I just have to cut it off. Long term, though, I do have a plan. Long term, I'm going to probably take the heater core out and get some sort of a tight 90 degree aluminum elbow and I could probably weld it on there and have plenty of clearance. But for now, um, yeah, I, I don't really have a good solution for you. So we're going to cut it. You guys have no idea how much I actually don't want to do this. I just I went back and forth for like 30 to 45 minutes trying to figure out another way. Um, LS2 car intakes would fit, but they're very, they're, weirdly, they're very expensive. So for now, we cut. And it fits. We don't actually have the bolts for this yet. They are on the way. But that's where it's gonna sit. All right, so the intake manifold actually looks really nice sitting under the hood now. Um, and the hood will shut. We just test fit it a second ago. And I'm still irritated that I cut those little tubes off the heater. But realistically, uh, if I wanted to run this intake, which I did, I already spent the money on it. I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out there at some point, guys, I promise. But. Um, we want to get this thing going. So um, intake's on. Now we're going to move on to something that I actually know is going to fit. Uh, these are the exhaust manifolds we're running. They're the Hooker LS SWAT manifolds, specifically for S10s. Um, they're designed around two-wheel drives, but they will fit the four-wheel drives very, very well. So um, that saves us a lot of time. I couldn't find any headers that would even come close to fitting how I wanted. So we're going to put the manifolds on and then move on to the next thing. So a lot of what we're doing today is just kind of like rough in plumbing work, getting a lot of components mounted so I can see what I'm going to have to do to get it plumbed. Like the fuel system, for example, we showed this earlier. Um, and these hard lines actually bent down pretty nice. I'm going to have the fuel filter uh, regulator mounted right there. I'm going to run an AN line up here, the flex fuel sensor block, um, right where the old fuel filter used to be. Uh, and after I got the exhaust manifolds, then I started messing around with the trans cooler lines. Um, and so I just started with the, these are the original lines from the 5.3 Silverado. And I thought I could get away with just kind of bending these and tweaking them, which um, this is the routing that I want to take. And I want to stop right here, flare them and put a union or a, adapt to AN lines there. Just that way, when we get the exhaust coming by here, I don't have any AN lines near the heat of the exhaust because there's going to be a lot going on in a very tight place. But as you can see, the, uh, the old lines, they didn't bend very well. They just kind of crimped. So I'm going to get a new set of lines ordered and maybe they can bend a little bit neater and nicer than the old 20 some year old steel lines. Um, if not, I can do the whole thing in AN and put some heat sleeve on it. Not a big deal. I just wanted to try something a little bit different on this one. 
And so up top here, we also made a fair amount of progress today. Um, I was excited to get this intake on, but at the same time, very, very bummed. Um, I will put a picture up on the screen that I found to somebody else with a TBSS intake on one of these, and they kind of bent the lines out, but it looked like the engine in their setup was a little bit lower. And like I kind of mentioned earlier, I just, um, that one hose there, not a big deal. We could have made something work with that, but um, the inner, inner hose way down there. There's no way I would have bent that and actually had it work. So I'm still trying to come up with a solution. I even hopped on eBay again and started looking around at like LS2 cathedral port intakes and used ones are like 500 bucks. New ones are like a thousand, even for like a Dorman OEM replacement LS2 intake. And I mean, that's really what I would have to have because I've already got a 90 millimeter four bolt drive by cable throttle body. Um, I've got the adapter or the throttle cable bracket on here. I've got the EVAP solenoid. I've got the fuel rail. I've got the inject injectors. So I've already spent a fair amount of money on um, this Trailblazer SS intake setup. So I kind of wanted to stick with it. So um, I also got to looking again at my footage of the LSA supercharger on there. And it looks like the LSA supercharger actually may have a little bit more room for the heater core. So we'll, like I said, I'll, I will figure out a solution for that at some point, but for now, I just wanna get this thing running. Cause long-term, remember, it's gonna have a bigger engine, a bigger supercharger, probably a different transmission, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. But this is phase one. I wanna get the thing running and enjoy it and have fun. So um, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, next time on this, we're gonna be doing some more progress. I've got an exhaust system on the way. We'll start getting that built. We'll do all the actual plumbing for the fuel system for the trans cooler line so we can actually get the thing started and fired up. I have a wiring harness. Um, we're full steam ahead on this bad boy. Uh, so today is just yeah, a lot of mock-up, but it's all got to be done. Thank you guys. Come back soon.